Hi everybody, my name is Geraldine and I'd like to welcome you to Handsband Rulers. So these are quilting rulers to use with your machine. This is the box they'll come in and they'll be packaged in the box so that you're able to put them away after you've finished using them and keep them in a safe place. Now I have a set already here, so it comes as a five piece set and you get what I call a base unit and it has um, a puzzle piece that fits inside here to give you a rectangular ruler with quarter inch markings and a 45 and a 60 degree angle on the bottom. You then have a two inch circle which can be placed into the puzzle piece and then you're able to pick this up and use the circle. If you are finished doing circles and you want to do straight lines you can simply turn around and use the other side. Now they are quite firm when they're in there and they're designed to be that way so they don't fall out. We have a two inch rounded which also can sit in there to give you another shape and then we have our soft arc. So when this goes in and it is quite easy just to put it down on the table and push it in. When this goes in now you have the soft arc on one side and you have your straight lines on the other side. Now the reason these rulers have come about is simply from a teaching perspective I found a lot of ladies had never done ruler work and some of them in fact had never done free motion sewing before and for whatever reason they didn't seem to like the ones that were available. So I came up with these as an introduction to getting people started in using rulers and it's so much fun, it's so easy they're called handspan because they fit in your hand. Whether the puzzle piece is in or not, it still fits in your hand. Now you can only quilt that distance of your hands every time you go along. So it seemed to be a perfect size for what we wanted to do. The other piece here, I've placed a tassel on the end and this is a quarter inch. So when you need to line things up, your machine is always going to be stitching a quarter inch away from the edge of your ruler and some of us find it hard to judge where that's going to end on the bottom of our markings. So if we place a quarter inch where we need to be then you now know exactly where you're going to end. So they're the pieces what I'd like to do now is to take you to the machine and show you how they work. So we'll do that now. So here we are at the machine. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is to set your machine so that you have your ruler foot on the machine. Now this is not your standard free motion foot. Um, it's a special foot designed for ruler work. So you, I'm on working on a 15,000, you know me. So you will need to check with your dealer that you have the correct foot on your machine. The sides of this foot are much higher than your other feet. And that's why the rulers are designed, if I put my foot down, to butt up against the side of the foot. So you never run the risk of crossing over accidentally with your foot and breaking a needle. That is not what you want to do. So never try and use your rulers that you might cut your fabric with. They're just not thick enough. So to get started here, what I would do is make sure my foot is down. I'm going to put my needle down and bring it up again and pull up that bobbin thread. Now I have um, about a 40 weight thread on the machine and then I'm going to just put my needle back down. Now you need to set your pace. This is 
a lot like any other free motion work in that if you move too fast you're going to have long stitches and if you move too slow you're going to have really short stitches. I like to set my pace on a medium speed and you're just going to stitch and it's as easy as that and you can see my touch is very light I'm not forcing anything through if you decided you wanted to change direction you simply take your ruler and go in the other direction you can go backwards and you can even take a zigzag now I am moving the fabric and the ruler at the same time but let's say you want to just even add a little bit of extra fabric on here so what I'm going to do is just wiggle my way back up and if I wanted to attach this I can now just work my way over to the side now I already know that the edge of the foot is a quarter inch away from the needle so if I want now to stitch this strip onto this white fabric all I have to do is place one on top of the other and now I can stitch down here now I could have the ruler on this side or I could have the ruler on this side so those things if you're a righty or a lefty it doesn't make any difference you can work how you're comfortable working with the quarter inch guidelines throughout this, the ruler I can make sure that I have a guideline on the edge of my fabric and I can just go and I'm really not fighting with this at all I'm just simply I do have these little rubber grippy finger things on the end here and I do usually have um, a supreme slider on on the bed but you can see it just works fine in fact I could do this with one hand If I just get off for now over here I could now turn this let's turn it around turn this out press this back this way so now if you are working on a project that you have a different fabric and you wanted to sew now a quarter inch on the inside of this grey fabric you could simply place your foot here and stitch down a quarter inch. If you wanted to sew a quarter inch onto the white fabric you could also do that by placing the foot there, place your ruler up against the edge of the fabric and now you have a quarter inch so let's come in on the grey and just do that now and when you need to move just slide the ruler down and you can see how easy that is without any fuss or bother. Now I did put my two inch circle on the other side of my ruler because now if you wanted to let me just work up here I can place the halfway line of my circle on the edge of the grey fabric in fact you could put any line you wanted on the grey but let's go with the half and now what I can do is stitch
around to the other side of the grey fabric. Once that's done I can take my ruler, place the line back on the grey and go again. And then do the same thing and you can keep doing that all the way down your border Oops, there we go, to create your clamshell designs. Now to come back, you would just come back to the halfway mark and you'll place the centre line here in the middle of these two clamshells. So the centre mark here horizontally with the same line you placed on the grey across the top. And then all you have to do then is stitch around here and do the same then on the next one and you have yourself a continuous clamshell pattern. It's so easy, it's so much fun. This was designed to make ruler quilting easy and to help those that haven't done it before get going and have somewhere to start that they can gain their confidence and then move on to bigger and better projects. So here's um, some examples of some clamshells that I've done earlier. You can just imagine that on a border of your quilt. And here I have a table runner which I've done some grid work on which was super easy and lots of fun to do. And then on this one, um, all of this background, the green and on the white and even the straight stitching on the border has been done using the rulers. So it is lots of fun, it's super easy, um, it's designed that way so that it's manageable for you. So come over to our website, we're at www.handspanrulers.com and join me on the other side. Bye for now.